In this video, I'm gonna show you how to vent plumbing pipes. I'm gonna show you how to vent a toilet. I'm gonna to show you how to vent a sink and a whole lot more. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel is all about DIY to save a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in turn for making this video. So we got a lot to go over today, so let's get started. After the building is framed up and under roof, the next step would be to install the plumbing. And with that being said, you'd want to address the drain lines first this building is on a concrete slab, so the drain lines are already in place. In fact, I made a video about that previously if you've been following my channel. And you want to do the venting next, and the reason why that is, is because the water lines, in this case it's going to be PEX pipe, is way more flexible and forgiving than these drain lines and vent pipes because this is scheduled 40 PVC. So you'd want to do your drain lines, then vent your plumbing, and then your water lines, and then the electrical and the electrical would come last, and that is because it's more flexible and forgiving. Obviously, a number 12 wire or gauge wire is going to be more flexible, and you can place that in more areas easily compared to these rigid plumbing pipes. I'm gonna briefly describe the system in which I'm gonna vent this building, and this is a garage with a half bath here, and then I got a utility sink, and then in the back, I got a outdoor kitchen drain that's gonna go through that wall. So I got an inch and a half pipe going through that wall. I got an inch and a half pipe here for the utility sink. I got a three inch pipe here that's for the toilet that's in the back right here. So this is gonna be the primary area in which it's gonna vent most of the venting for this building. And then I got an inch and a half pipe here that's for the sink. So I gotta tie the inch and a half pipe for the sink in with the three inch pipe into this three inch stack. And then I gotta tie in this inch and a half pipe here up above. And then this inch and a half pipe in the, uh, for the outdoor kitchen is going to be using a studer vent because it's not gonna be used very often. And it's gonna be a much easier process to do that with the studer vent than to tie it in with this venting in this building. So with that being said, let's get started. In order to join together the PVC pipe, I'm gonna be using purple primer in order to prime the pipe first. And I got to use purple primer in this jurisdiction because the inspector wants to make sure it was primed. So the purple indicates it was primed. And then to glue it together, I'm gonna to be using PVC cement. And this is heavy duty PVC cement and it can go up to an 18 inch non-pressurized drain line. So this is plenty for this application. And I could get away with the medium duty, but this is what I had on hand, so I'm just gonna use it. So that's what I'm gonna be using to make my joints. I'm gonna begin here at the bathroom sink and head towards the three inch pipe inside of this two by six wall. A lot of times I would run this up through the wall and connect up above, but we're kind of limited for space above this wall. So I'm actually gonna hook the venting here in the wall. So with that being said, I know that my sink drain has to be 13 inches from the edge of this wall over and then 18 inches off the floor. And I'm gonna to have to connect it to the P-trap using an elbow outside of this stud like so. So I'm just gonna take a quick reference here and see where we're at. So right here is 18 inches to the center and then 13 inches is off the wall right here like so. So that's about where this has to end up, something like that. So I gotta take my Sani T and install it about right there. So with that being said, the reason why I gotta use a Sani T here is because whenever you have a P-trap coming in like this, you would not put a Y vertical, you would have to use a Sani T like so. So I do gotta get a inch and a half coupling in order to connect it to this drain. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all installed first. Before I glue anything, I'm gonna first pre-cut this section before I get started. So I'm gonna pop my coupling on first, and then I gotta measure up to that 18 inch height for this Sani T. So 18 inches puts me right here. So I'm gonna hold this at 18 inches and measure the difference. And I got five and a half. So with five and a half being the measurement, all I got to do now is add inch and a half because three quarters is gonna go inside of this pipe and three quarters is gonna go inside this coupling. So after that's said and done, that's gonna give a seven inch piece of pipe we gotta cut. The two methods I often use to cut PVC pipe is either a sawzall with a metal blade. I like to use a metal blade because it cuts the pipe cleaner than using a framing blade that's for wood. With that being said, I also, which is my favorite tool I like to use, is just a simple miter saw. This is a typical 10 inch miter saw. 
And the reason why I like it, it's portable. I can take it around if I'm in a crawl space to cut the plumbing pipe, whatnot. And it makes a nice clean square cut. So my tool of choice is usually a miter saw. And I just use a typical framing blade. It usually does a really good job. So I'm just gonna cut off this square end of the pipe, seven inches. Another great thing about using a miter saw, as you can see, there are barely any burrs on the pipe after you cut it, but I still take a utility knife and then deburr around the edge of the outside of the pipe. And then after I deburr the outside of the pipe, I'll deburr the inside of the pipe as well. And especially when this isn't the actual part of the drain. So because water will be flowing through here, it's very important to get those burrs off so you don't have a clog. But if this was the vent pipe that's going to be above this, I wouldn't have to worry about the burrs as much. I'm now going to place that pipe that I just cut onto the coupling and then place my Sani T here. And now I'm going to measure up to make sure we're at 18 inches. And as you can see, we are at 18 inches and that's what we want. And now I got to get this over here like so. So as you can see, it's definitely going to take it all, but I'm going to glue or glue a inch and a half piece here just to join these together like so. Okay, I now got my inch and a half piece cut. And now we're going to put this together like so. Make sure we're together all the way here. So that looks good. And now when it comes to the vent part, we're going to angle over towards that three inch like so. So that's going to give us a nice vent. And then this is going to be our drain to our sink. And we'll take all this off and glue it together. Before gluing the pipes together, I try to wear gloves so that way we don't get any of that primer glue on our skin. And you can also wear a mask or respirator if the fumes are going to get to you if you're not in a ventilated area. So I recommend those things. First thing I gotta do is prime this part here that's gonna go on the pipe. So this coupling's gonna get primed in the top of this pipe. And again, make sure there's no burrs on this pipe either. Now that we're primed, we're gonna take our glue and place it around the pipe and inside of this coupling. And now we're gonna push the fitting on and twist about a quarter turn. And then we're gonna hold it for about 30 seconds. And that's gonna give us a good bond. I'm now going to prime this piece of pipe and do the same thing. To make sure our T is placed in here properly, I'm just gonna dry fit this together like so. And then I'm gonna place this on to the position in which it needs to be installed. So right there looks about right. Now I'm gonna mark it with a pencil on the pipe and on the fitting. So now when I glue this together, we need to line these marks up. Now I'll glue the rest of this together and hold pressure for 30 seconds. Now I'm gonna glue the rest of this on. To get the angle here for my drain coming into the bathroom, I'm just gonna place this elbow up to this then take a scrap piece of pipe and put into that elbow there. And then we're gonna just make sure we have pretty much level going into that drain. Now, before I go any further with this sink vent, I need to figure out where this fitting is going to be placed here in order to catch the vent over here. So with that being said, as you can see, the way this slope is, it's sloped upwards towards the ceiling. That's because when you're venting, you want the air to be flowing up towards the ceiling. And then if you're using this as a sani tee, you would obviously have this angle down towards the drain. So that's something very important to note. So as you can see, I got the angle going up. So I'm gonna dry fit it onto this three inch pipe like so. And now I'm gonna angle it towards this area here. So I'm gonna mark the studs in order which I gotta drill out to place the inch and a half pipe to intersect into the elbow before it goes down to the drain. I'm now gonna drill out the holes going towards the vent. In order to drill these holes out, I actually got a two and a half inch hole saw to drill these out. And that's definitely bigger than what I need for inch and a half pipe. But because I'm going through these two studs, I need all the room I can get to get it in and get it glued. 
Now that I got my holes drilled, I'm just gonna dry fit everything here before I glue it, just to make sure it's doable. All right, so as you can see, this is dry fit together and it is doable. Sometimes through these wall spaces like this, it's very difficult, but I can just squeeze it in the way I need it. So I'm gonna mark everything and then glue this together. Right, that all glued together nicely. I'm now gonna install this three inch pipe going up through my roof because I'm actually in the middle of doing my shingles. As you can see, I got my safety harness on. So this video part was recorded in the past while I was doing the roof. So the first thing I gotta do, as you can see, the pipe is right here going through this wall. So I'm just gonna follow it right till I get past the floor up here above me. So I can go right up through my roof. As you can see, right here's the center of the wall in which the pipe's gonna come up through. So I got to measure over to the center, which is four and three quarters inch off the edge of this truss. Well, in this case, it's a floor joist that's part of the truss because right up here is the floor above. But we got to keep four and three quarter inches off this truss and go over past the edge of the room trusses and up through the roof. In order to drill the hole out for the vent pipe, I got a three and a half inch drill bit and drill right up through the sheathing. Make sure I hold my drill bit nice and plumb when I do so. As you can see, the pipe is stubbed right up through the roof and it's just sitting on this wooden block to hold it into place until we run the rest of our plumbing, which that's what we're doing in this video. I'm now gonna run this three inch pipe straight up into the ceiling and I wanted to show you something why I had to put this vent pipe down here instead of up above like I would if I had an attic space. If you look at the three inch elbow, it's definitely not enough room to have tied everything in together here because as you can see, there's barely any space as it is. And I had to cut out this nailer in order to even get this elbow in here. I could have also used this three inch elbow with the inch and a half heel insert. But the reason why I didn't do this because it was easier for me to work below than it was from above, especially off of a ladder. So now I got to mark exactly where this three inch pipe's gonna come up into this ceiling and then cut this out with a hole saw. In order to figure out where to cut up above, I'm just gonna take a straight edge, place it flat against the wall. And as you can see, the edge of that pipe is right on the edge of the wall. And then I'm gonna measure over to the center. So it looks like I got about four inches over. So I gotta transcribe those measurements up above before we cut it out with the hole saw. The hole saw that I'm gonna be using is a three and a half inch hole saw. And this is the same diameter as the outside of the three inch pipe. I'm now gonna transcribe the measurement onto this plate and drill it out. All right, we can now place the pipe up through the ceiling. So I'm gonna fish it right up through that hole first. And something I wanted to mention earlier, this pipe that's coming through the wall, it's actually sloped towards the sink drain. So that way, so air can flow properly. And also if any moisture gets in the pipe, it's more apt to go down the drain. Obviously it's going too easily, but I just wanted to mention that. So now I'm gonna fit this three inch pipe into this fitting. Something I like to mention here, whenever you're priming or gluing the inside of this, be careful because one time I had the end of this break off and go down into the plumbing pipe and I had to retrieve it and it was a pain. Just be sure they don't put too much pressure when you're gluing the inside of these pipes when it goes straight down into the drain. Now that the pipe's through the top plate of this wall, I'm just gonna dry fit this elbow on it and angle it about where I need it. And then I'm gonna take a measurement and see where the bottom of this coupling is. And then I know I need to put a slight slope going away from where it goes up through the roof. So now I'm gonna take a measurement here and see what I got. I got about four and five eighths to the bottom of this elbow. So it's gonna be about four and a half to the bottom of the pipe. So in order to give me a slope, I'm gonna subtract and I'm gonna give myself about four inches from here to where it goes up through the ceiling or up through the roof, I should say. So I'm gonna put a block there to support the pipe so I can glue this at the right angle. Here's where the three inch pipe is coming up through the ceiling. And here's where the three inch pipe is going up through the roof. With that being said, if you remember right, I said I had to have four inches down from the top of this ceiling joist in order to place a block to support that pipe. So I just got a block with some screws in it. So I'm just gonna measure down four inches and then place the block. 
and I'm over here towards the end of the run where it goes up into the roof. All right, now we got good support here for our pipe and I'm going to lay it up here in order to get my distance. In order to get the right angle of this elbow, I'm going to dry fit it onto that pipe. And now I'm going to put the pipe inside of that elbow. And now I'm going to turn the pipe to angle towards right where that pipe's going up through the roof. Now let me check that below. As you can see, if you eyeball if it lined up properly, it's lining up perfectly. So now we know the angle of this elbow is right, so we're going to mark it and glue it together. All right, I'm just going to mark this where it goes. So I know where to line the marks up. Take off this pipe. Now I'm just gonna glue this back on that angle. And before I glue this pipe, I'm gonna dry fit it into here and then cut it to length. And now these pipes go in an inch and a half into each other when they make the joint. Unlike the other ones, it's twice as much. I'm just gonna hold this up here and eyeball where to cut it here. I'm going to take the pipe down and cut it off right here. All right, I just cut that to length. And now I'm going to glue it over here. I'm now going to glue this elbow to elbow right up through the roof. In order to do this, I'm going to move this board out of the way that's holding up this pipe like so. And now I'm going to dry fit this one to here and on here. So now that I have the right angle, I'm just gonna mark it on the pipe. And whenever I glue anything at eye level or above, or even below, you really should wear some kind of safety glasses. All right, and I'm not gonna glue this pipe right here yet. And the reason why is I gotta intercept another vent pipe into this pipe. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that now. Here's a little bit of a unique situation for this drain pipe that's going through the concrete floor. As you can see, the wall's back here, but the drain's right here a couple inches away from the wall. I can easily pad out this wall, get inside the wall, then run the vent straight up, but I don't want to do all of that. So what I'm going to do is put a sani T here for the sink's drain, and then I'm going to elbow back inside of this wall and go straight up. Then I'll just have to cut the cabinet to go around it, which ain't that big a deal. And uh, another thing I could do here is put a studer vent here, and that way I wouldn't have to run the vent up through the wall. But I always try to avoid those vents. That's because those air admittance valves, which that's what the studer vent is, wear out over time. They usually last about eight to 10 years. So I, so I don't have to worry about that in the future. I'm just going to run this vent pipe straight up to the stack. Here's the inch and a half pipe that we just stubbed up through that wall. Here's the three inch pipe that's going through the roof and there's the elbow that we installed earlier. So now I'm going to elbow over with this inch and a half pipe and intercept into this three inch pipe and then that's gonna be the vent for that sink. So I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse this, but I just wanna let you know I will be taking this out from the roof. So as you can see, it can slide in and out of the flange that's on the roof. So that's an important concept to know. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do all of this. As you can see, we got a nice slope going towards this vent pipe, and this is gonna pull the air out of this three inch stack, so there's plenty of vent for that sink. And as you can see right here is where the main stack's going and our fittings turn properly so that the airflow will be nice and easy and gradual. I'm gonna zoom in to this pipe so you can see the boot. As you can see, that flange does not require caulking because it has a rubber seal that fits tight around the pipe. And if you wanna see how I installed that, be sure to check out the roofing video. I'll put a link in the description as well. I'm now gonna address the outdoor kitchen plumbing. And because this is out here by itself, Again, I'm going to use the studer vent or the air admittance valve, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the center of this pipe where it hits the wall, and I'm just going to mark it with my pencil, so it's going to be about right here. And now, so I know exactly where it is on the other side of the wall, I'm going to drive just a screw into the wall so it 
punctures through so I can see it on the other side. Now I'll know exactly where the center of that pipe is from the outside, so let's go outside to address where to place the pipe. Here's where that screw punctured through the side of the wall. So I know that plumbing pipe's right here, and I know I need 18 inches off the finished floor for this drain, just like the inside. So I'm gonna mark that right here. So we need the center of the drain coming out right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill that out, just like we did for the other pipes going through the walls. Because our sandy tee will come out right here, we got to now place an elbow right above it in order to place the studer vent. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna hold these together like so, line this up at the center of that hole, and then see where that hits up in the wall here. Something like that. Now I gotta mark that on the wall. I'm gonna back this screw up out of the way. Now I'm gonna drill that out. All right, and as you can see, this is simply going to fit from the inside coming through those holes. So I gotta go in there to do such a thing. I'm gonna begin by placing this up to that first hole. So it's somewhere right there. So it looks like we need to cut this pipe right here. Now I'm gonna take my Sawzall and cut that off right there. All right, we now got that cut off nice and clean. Just like the rest of the pipes, we got to deburr it. Now I'm gonna dry fit that. Looks like cut just a smidge too much off. So I'm gonna cut these holes just a little lower now. All right, now as you can see, that's perfect. And let's go ahead and glue all this together. Now I'm gonna glue all this on in one shot. All right, we're now through the wall. I'm now just gonna prime and glue two six inch pipes coming out of this wall. Because this wall is gonna be covered in metal, because the outdoor kitchen, I want something that won't melt like vinyl, I'm going to put a block over this and it's gonna go against this wall and then I'm gonna trim around it for my access to the plumbing. So I'm gonna mark and then cut this out for that. I now got this drilled out and I'm gonna place it over those pipes. I'm now just going to make sure I'm nice and level. All right, that looks really good. And then I'm going to take my trim nailer and just put four nails, one in each corner. Now right now I'm going to just cap off this bottom one. That's going to be for when the actual drain comes into this. I'm going to do this in my outdoor kitchen video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. And for the studer vent, once it comes time to do that as well, I'm just going to elbow this up it's gonna be hooked in the pipe, but I'll probably cut it back to about here. So it's gonna elbow up, and then I'm going to get this installed on top of that. And then the air admittance valve will be installed on top of that. Like I said, I didn't want all this sticking out right now. So I'm gonna keep all this off and address this later. So for now, we're just gonna put a cap right over it until we do the outdoor kitchen. I got these plugs made by Odie that I'm gonna thread into these openings and they just have this little washer and as you tighten up this wing nut, it's gonna seal that up until we finish the drywall. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these in here now. And also, this hole here, or should I say this pipe coming up through the concrete is for the toilet. I'm gonna to make a whole video on how to transition into the concrete and place this toilet on this concrete floor, so stay tuned for that. And if you'd like to purchase these plugs, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. And these are also used for pressure testing the pipes as well. This will seal them off very nicely. You may be wondering why do we vent plumbing pipes to begin with? So I'm gonna illustrate a real world example of why you vent plumbing. This is gonna act as the plumbing drain coming down from a sink. So if we put water in this, we're gonna see what it's like if there is no vent versus if there's vent. So as you can see, we got water in this plumbing pipe. So if you watch as it tries to drain, it doesn't drain very well at all here until this would act as the vent above, the water flies out once you have plenty of airflow through the pipe. So whenever there's water coming down and there's a clog here up above, so let's say there is no vent, the water's not gonna drain properly until we release. 
I'm going to illustrate this one more time. So we're going to fill this up with water. And as you can see, not much drain till we release with plenty of vent once we release our thumb. So that is why you need a vent up above a sink or toilet because you need that airflow to let the water drain properly. I typically do my own plumbing on my investment projects, so I don't do plumbing for a living per se, but I always pull the permits and get all my plumbing inspected. And I'm gonna show you a couple things I learned along the way. So this is plumbing vent. If we take a look here, the red marks represents three inch pipe, and then the green marks represents inch and a half or two inch pipe. And I'm gonna show you a simple two story per se on how I would plumb a house. So I would first have a three inch pipe going straight up as the main stack, and then I would have the three inch drain going out to either a septic system or the city water and sewer. Well, not city water, but to the city sewer. But then I would have, let's say, an inch and a half pipe coming from a sink, and then a two inch pipe coming from, let's say, the shower or bathtub, and then I would drain it right into the three inch pipe, and then I would do the same, let's say, on the second story. And then these dotted lines represents what's acting as the vent. So right here, I would have a vent pipe coming up, either connecting to the vent pipe to the shower above as well, or the sink above as well. And then they would be tied in at the attic space, then tied into the three inch pipe. Then I'd have one three inch pipe coming up through the roof. And then that would vent that whole two bathrooms of the upper story and lower story. And then obviously if we we're on the lower story, you would simply, let's say, take this section, move it here, and then tie all your vent pipes together in the attic and then go up through the roof, similar to what we did in this building. So that's just a quick rundown. Again, there's a ton of online resources you can view and a ton of diagrams online if you had any more additional questions about how to connect a bunch of different type of lavatories or toilets. So that's my gist. I usually don't put more than two bathrooms on a three inch stack. And again, I build simple residential houses, so it's never anything that complicated. And then I always say check your local building codes because building codes can vary from region to region or state to state. So always do that if you're gonna be doing your own plumbing. And next, let's talk a little bit about wet venting. Wet venting is pretty common like in a basement to where you gotta share your drain. So let's say this is a sink and this is the vent stack going up here. So this drain coming from the sink into the vent stack, this section here would be considered wet vent. And that's because it's acting as the drain and the vent at the same time. So whenever water goes down, it's gonna siphon air back and forth through that same pipe. I try to stay away from wet vents as much as possible. Just like the sink that I did here, technically underneath the slab could have been a wet vent per se, but I put the dry vent above. Again, it's called dry venting if the vent's above the fixture and doesn't have any wet vent in between. So with that being said, I always make sure there's plenty of vent no matter what. If you'd like to see how I'm gonna install this PEX pipe in this building, check out this video, it'll help you out.